the density, you are saying that for a body to float, the density of the body must be less than that of the liquid. So that's, that's, the, so that's, the, point that's the first condition. Yes, please. So mm -hmm. I'm asking, so when like, for instance, um, I know how to swim and mm -hmm. someone who weighs the same as I weigh doesn't know how to swim. And then we are, let's say we are at the pool and then she's saying she's, she's drowning, but then mm -hmm. I am floating. Does that mean that like we are having different weights or? You see, yes, you are having different weights. But you see, the, the, the swimming thing in a pool also depends on, you just don't lie idle in it. It depends on certain skills, swimming skills you have to apply, okay? So that one does not do with flotation? No, no, no. You see, there is attract. There is attract on you. And the attract must be equal to um your your own body weight but apart from that okay we human beings would have to apply some scales to keep us afloat else you're still drawn so that's a, a different thing is that okay okay thank you very much all right so weight of body must be equal to weight of the leopard display and i said because weight it's equal to mass times acceleration due to gravity. Weight of the body can be expressed as mass of body times g. It's also equal to mass of liquid display times g. The g is equal okay at both sides so this and this so that we have mass of body equal to the mass of liquid display so the second condition can also be stated in terms of mass if the weight of body must be equal to the weight of the liquid display or mass of body must be equal to the mass of the liquid display. They all satisfy the, uh, the second condition, either in terms of weight or in terms of mass. Class, are we okay? Yes, please. Good. If you have any questions, if no question. So for a fish to stay afloat, the density of the body must be less than the density of the liquid. Okay? Or the weight of the body must be equal to the weight of the liquid display. And please don't forget that the weight of the liquid display is also equal to the abstract. So we can also say that for a body to stay afloat, the weight of the body must be equal to the abstract or the upward force or the buoyant force acting on the body. Are we okay? Yes, and, please. And so either body or after both of it with all the masses. Now let's look at application of flotation. Applications of flotation. Or uh, before we look at applications of it, let's look at. Um, Let's look at the law of flotation. The law of flotation. Flotation, please. The English will spell it as this. 
Americans spell it as F value. Okay. And anyway, we are doing British English. So you let me spell, let me go the English way. <laughs> okay. So the law of rotation. The law of rotation is actually carved from the second condition for an object to stay afloat. And what is the second condition? The second condition is that the, the weight of the object must be equal to the weight of um, the liquid displays or the uptrust. So the law of the law of rotation says that a floating body. displaces its own weight of fluid. A floating body displaces its own weight of fluid. I think it's clear, isn't it? The second law is that for a body to float, the weight of the body must be equal to the weight of the liquid displayed. So a floating body displays its own weight of fluid. Class, isn't it clear? Isn't it? Yes, please. Mm -hmm. A floating body displaces its own weight of fluid and that's all application the concept of rotation is applied last time i talked about shapes for shapes are made to float on water now it means that for for ships, okay, to stay afloat, it has to be designed in such a way that it displaces large volume of water, because we saw that the uptrust is directly proportional to the volume of water displaced by the ship. So when you design the ship in such a way that it will displace huge volume of water to have a commensurate uptrust which will keep the ship afloat because the uptrust must be equal to its own weight. So ships work on the principle of flotation. And the uptrust also depends on density of the liquid. Okay, another object or machinery that operates on the law of rotation is the submarine. Submarine. Submarine is used for both, well, I'll, say that, well, I'll say dual purpose. It can be used as a ship to float okay on water and then sink and still move okay so its operation is also on the principle of flotation especially when it has to float the uptrust must be equal to the entire weight of it okay if you if they want submarine to sink then they fill it okay they fill it with water and the water filling it with water would make the entire density of it greater than the water and will go, okay, it will sink to a certain level. Then, and even that they determine the quantity of water that has to go in because the quantity of water pumped in would also decide whether it's going to sink to the uh, floor of the sea or to a certain level. So they take all that into consideration. 
if they want it to um float they pump air out uh, sorry the water out and then pump air within okay the air makes it its average weight to be lesser than the the density of the water and so it stays afloat. another object that works on the principle of rotation is um the hydrometer hydrometer The hydrometer is a device that is used to determine the density of um, liquids, either the density of the or the relative density of liquids. And it also works on the principle of flotation. And the extent to which it was sink, okay, the hydrometer was sink in liquid or fluid will determine the density of the um, of the liquid whose rd or density is to be determined okay another device or machine that works on the principle of flotation is the hot air balloon the hot air balloon please let me see my hands those of you who who are familiar with the hot air balloon if you are familiar with the hot air balloon, let me see you. Then we we'll talk about it briefly. Yaba, uh -huh. can you tell me something about the hot air balloon, what it is used for and how it works? Yaba? Hey, Yaba, are you there? Okay, so the hot air balloon is actually used for exploration. It, it is also used for tourism purposes. Okay, and it looks like we have a very huge balloon fabric. Mm -hmm. Anyway, we are not here to draw. So, <laughs> okay, so this is a balloon fabric with baskets. Okay, the basket usually houses those who would board the hot air balloon. Okay, so maybe if you want to use it for tourism purposes, then you will be here. So, Zuviel, you'll be here. And Kuya Watma, you'll also be here. So, the basket, how did the explorers or the tourists, okay? This is a very large balloon fabric. This is a very large balloon fabric. Now, what happens here? The hot air balloon is filled with light gas. One of the light gases, such as hydrogen, carbon, or helium. And there's always a fire chamber within. There is always a fire chamber. Yaba. Hello, Yaba. So there is fire chamber. Okay. Okay. So let's look at its operation entirely. The operation of the hot air balloon. It, it works on the principle of rotation, and that is the total weight of the balloon plus the occupants or the people on board and equal to the abstract 
acting on the balloon. Acting the aircraft on the balloon. Because for, for bodies to float, the, to the weight of the body must be balanced by the aircraft acting on the body. Class, are you there? Hello, are you there? Yes, yes I get no feedback. That's why I'm so the total weight of the balloon plus the people on board plus everything must be equal to the aircraft. So the balloon would have to be made in such a way that it is lighter so that the surrounding um the the air the aircraft okay produced by the air will be greater so for the balloon to actually take off first the aircraft produced by the air must be greater than the entire weight weight of the balloon so if you have the aircraft going up being greater than this then the net the net force will act upwardly and so it could push the balloon up okay so first the ultra must be greater than the entire weight for it to take off and go up if this condition okay is not obtained we can have the situation where the balloon will take off from the um from the surface of the air please are we okay so the foremost condition is that for the for the balloon to take off the ultra must be greater than the entire weight how is that achieved how is this initial condition achieved you see that is why the balloon is filled with light lighter gas very light gas such as any of the hydrogen in fact hydrogen is the lightest so hydrogen argon or helium any of it will do and hydrogen is the lightest among all the three so it is filled with hydrogen gas the idea is that hydrogen is lighter compared to all the gases. Then they create a fire chamber. The fire chamber heats the hydrogen up. You know, the idea is that when it is heated, hydrogen, the, the, the whole chamber becomes lighter the more. So that is why even in our rooms, when our rooms, okay, feel very warm, all that we do is that we open the window for cold or fresh air to blow into it. Now, um, because warm air is lighter, the fresh cold air can easily displace, push away the lighter warm air, okay, so that the room in no time will be completely um cold air because the warm air has been displaced pushed away creating a convectional current where cold air just blows in pushes away warm air and the cycle continues on and on so when air becomes warmer it 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 feels lighter so that is why yes the hydrogen um the balloon is filled with hydrogen gas and it is Further heated to make it lighter the more. In which, because the volume of the hydrogen fabric is too huge, large, it makes the whole compartment to be lighter. And so, when you put a hot air balloon at an environment where the wind velocity is high, because the attract of the surrounding air, okay, the attract exerted by the air. Is greater than the entire weight of the balloon, it could easily boil it up. And then, the, because the resultant will be in the direction of the aircraft, it will go up, up, on and on and on. Please, are we okay? Yes, please. Good. Now, if we have obtained the condition where the aircraft is greater than the entire weight, then it means that the balloon would go up, 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 up. And we don't expect it to stop because 
we have the abstract being greater than the entire weight. And so it will continue to go, but it doesn't work like that. The reason is that, you see, abstract, abstract U is equal to density of the fluid times the volume of the fluid times gravity. Now, as we go up, as, as we go up, the density of the air decreases. That is why the uh, mountaineers, those who climb mountains, when you are going to climb a very tall mountain, you have to go with oxygen because the higher you go, the lesser is the concentration of oxygen. So when you get to a certain altitude or height, you cannot have adequate oxygen to breathe to sustain your life. So you have to go with oxygen to help you. So as the higher we go, the less dense the air becomes. So if as the body goes up, 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 the density of the air is dropping. Then it seems the abstract will also be dropping as the body, as the hot air balloon goes up. Class, are you okay here? Yes, please. Good. So it will be dropping to a, a, at a particular height or altitude because the density factor will be reducing. We will go to a point where equal to the entire weight. Because the initial condition is that the abstract must be greater than the entire weight for, for it to go up. Now, because density as we go up will be decreasing, uh, at, at a particular altitude, at a particular altitude, we'll have the abstract being equal to the entire weight. And if the uh, abstract is equal to the entire weight, that is the point where we have the hot air balloon floating. Instead of it going up, it will be moving horizontally. Okay, that is floating in air. And um, the tourists, explorers will be taking photos and so on and so forth. About, I think before COVID, Promacido Ghana promoted this thing in the country, cowbell. I don't know if some of you saw it on TV, where um, celebrities were, I mean, uh, um, are, are taken on board and then given an account of how, I don't know if anybody uh, here saw it on TV before COVID, or you were not born by then. <laughs> oh, you yeah. Romano Ghana promoted uh, the hot air balloon in Ghana. So, so what is the condition where the hot air balloon will stay afloat and will not go up again? Now it is piloted. It is piloted. I'm not a hot air balloon pilot, but the the basic um, control I know is that because of physics, if you are coming down. All that you have to do is to uh, extinguish the fire. Because when you extinguish the fire, the heating effect of the hydrogen gas within will not be there. And will make it, instead of that will not make it lighter. Because the, the air which warms it is, I'm uh, sorry, the fire source which warms it is not there. So it, it will not be, uh, it will not be heavier sorry, lighter as before. So the primary control is that extinguish the fire, but it is piloted. There is somebody who could, who knows how to control it on and on and on. So it lands safely. Any question? Any question? If you have any question, quickly ask. If you don't have any question, can I move on? Yes, please. All right. Let me talk briefly about. So we we'll applying the water balloon. We we'll be applying um, the hydrometer in our calculations. That is why I'm um, spending time to 
throw more light on this thing. Let's look at the hydrometer. The hydrometer has a uniform cross-sectional area. As I said earlier, it is used to determine the density and the relative density of liquids. It's like this. It has a uniform cross-sectional area throughout. It has graduated mass. Now, when you the level of its Flotation or sinking determines the density of the liquid. So once the graduated mass emits, this has values. When it gets to a certain a certain level, it indicates the magnitude of the of the density of the liquid. Now, we think the mole. When you think the mole, it means that the liquid is less than. When it's saying the more, go into the liquid medium so much, it means the liquid is less than because the um, it's graduation is not from 0.3 to 1, 1.5, 2. Okay, so when the hydrometer sinks more into the liquid, it means it is less than what it sinks less. So when it sinks less. It implies that. So when it sinks less or floats more, it implies the liquid is more dense. Okay, so that's the usage. Now, let's look at the calculation here. For hydrometer to flow, the mass, mass of hydrometer must be equal to the mass of liquid display. Okay, so the mass of the hydrometer can be determined using electronic balance or if its density and volume are given. You can also use that to find the mass. But so mass of hydrometer must be equal to mass of liquid displays. The mass of liquid displays can be expressed as the density of the liquid times the volume of the liquid displayed by the liquid. So this part can be density of the liquid times the volume of the liquid 
display by the hydrometer. Now, for volume of liquid display, because the hydrometer has a uniform, because it has a uniform, a uniform cross-sectional area, And let's assume the cross sectional area is A. We mean we are talking about from here to here. Okay. If the cross sectional area of the hydrometer is A, then it means that the volume of liquid display will be equal to volume. Volume is area times height. So the uniform cross sectional area times the height, okay, to which the hydrometer actually sink in the liquid. If the hydrometer sink by a vertical height of H, then the volume of liquid is display becomes A times H. Please, are we okay? Class, are we okay here? Yes. Hello. And please, you said that the A is, please, when you say that the A, a is the un uniform cross sectional area of the hydrometer. Okay. So okay. that is what I mean. If the hydrometer is like what I have in my hand, then it means from its starting end to ending, but the cross sectional area is the same. Okay. So we are using A for the uniform cross-sectional area of the hydrometer. Then H is the height of um, the depth to which the hydrometer sinks in the liquid. So okay. let's assume, let's assume that okay, there's a hydrometer, and from 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 this end to where my hand is is the level to which the hydrometer sinks in the liquid, H. Okay, so it means that the, the volume of the liquid displaced is equal to the cross-sectional area A times the height. Okay, within okay. The liquid. thank you very much. All right, thank you. Too. It, 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 mean, it means that mass of hydrometer is equal to um density of the liquid times cross-sectional area times the height okay so this this remains the expressions we mostly use to calculate for so the question can be calculate the height to which the hydrometer sinks but this is the whole integrity about the hydrometer so if it's if it's about the weight, then weight of hydrometer will be equal to the abstract. And the abstract is density of the liquid, volume of liquid displays times gravity. This volume of liquid displays is equal to the cross-sectional area of the hydrometer times the height times G. So if it's about weight, this is how it will go, right? Hello, class, is that okay? Yes. So, this, this is the theory behind. Wait, but. This is the theory behind the, um, the hydrometer and then the hot air balloon. I'll pick questions so that we go through for you to uh, for you to master how you can apply that in solving problems is that okay is that okay yes we have about 13 minutes let's use the 13 minutes to quickly solve our question the b part of the question all right so I feel what, give me what 
we were asked to do in a question. Is that fine one? The fraction of the solid submerged in a liquid the density of 1.19. So the liquid has a density of 1.19 gram per cm cube. And we have to find the um, fraction of the solid submerged in the liquid. Okay. Okay. All right. So it simply means that the solid float, okay, in the new liquid. So for a body to float, mass of the object must be equal to the mass of liquid displayed. And it is the same object. The only difference here is that we are changing the, um, the liquid, okay? We are changing the liquid. In the first situation, the density was 1.5. Here it is 1.19, okay? So the, the, the mass of the liquid can also be expressed as the density of the liquid times the volume of the liquid displayed. What is the mass of the, of the solid? Yes, what did we obtain as the mass of the solid? Yes. Plus, yes. So 237.5 is the mass of the, um, of the object or solid. Now let's find the volume of the liquid display. And that will be equal to 237.5 divided by the density of the liquid, which is now 1.19. Please calculate this for me. Two three seven point five divided by one point one nine. Please let's be quick. Let's be quick. One nine nine point one nine nine point five eight. Okay, so approximately two hundred. Okay, this implies a fraction of the object submerged, of object submerged, is equal to 200 divided by, what did we get as the volume of the object? What did we calculate as the volume of the object? In tier, I mean, in tier Q. Class, what did what did we uh, obtain as the volume of the object? One point five times ten to the power negative four. No, I in 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 tier Q. I mean, in tier Q. 150. Okay, okay. So it means, you see, I changed. There's a difference here because when I took the short, I, I, I couldn't get the density of the liquid. So I changed the value from, I didn't, the short could not capture the density of the liquid. So 